there are some things you want to make sure you avoid doing with the Canon R5C. So I'm going to tell you how to set this camera up for video the right way. All the way from picture profiles to monitoring features that will help you get the most out of your Canon R5C. Now if you're looking for something specific within this video you can use the chapter markers down in the description but there might be some things that you didn't know so I recommend watching the whole video and then you can refer back to it whenever you need. Now, firstly there's a few different ways of accessing different menus. Now the first one is this menu button here that brings you to the main menu. Click it again and it brings you back to the main screen. You could use this Q menu that takes you to the same menu but in the bottom left corner there's a little touchpad icon. Press that and it gives you more options so then you can change the white balance here and then all your camera settings which we'll get to in a bit but then that brings up another menu in the top left corner. So you click that and it brings you to a different menu setting. This is kind of like your quick menu so you can either scrub through this menu on the touch screen or you can use the wheel at the top. There's a few things that get on my nerves. For example, this viewfinder eye sensor. So when you're trying to access some of the menus or touch the touch screen, you'll see that the monitor switches off and then you take your hand away and it comes back on. Now that's really annoying for somebody that doesn't use the viewfinder. So I like to switch that off to begin with, but you can also customize it in a few different ways. So go over to the menu and scroll across to the monitoring setup. It's all the way down at the bottom on the first tab where it says LCD slash viewfinder output. So click on that, and then you've got a few different options. So we've got Auto 1, which is what it's normally on, which is LCD only, but then it automatically switches. A few other options, Viewfinder only, but I like to have it on LCD only because I'm just using it for video. So click that, and as you can see, when you go onto the shooting screen, put your hand over the sensor and it no longer turns the LCD off. So that's the first thing done. Then obviously you've got full customization over your LCD screen so you can change the brightness, the contrast, the color, the sharpness, all that sort of stuff. And you can set that up to however you like. Now that's up to you how you do that because everybody's preference is different. If you're in bright situations, it's good to have a nice bright screen so you can change that on the back there. Another thing that I like to do first is change the opacity of the camera menu system so that you can still see through the menu system and what you're filming at. This is handy if, you, if you've if you got certain things that you want to look at whilst you're changing things so you can see what's being changed. Or you can just have it solid, whichever you prefer. So you can change the opacity here. It's on the monitoring setup and then it's the sixth tab. So you turn that on and then you can change the opacity level. So as you can see there, from 25% to 75%. I've just kept it on 75% but it's handy to know if you do want that feature. You can also make this happen on an external monitor. So if I turn this on and then set it at 25%, you can see that that's adjusting the transparency of the menu system. You can also change how the fan operates. Click menu on the settings tab and it's the eighth tab across. Fan mode, automatic or always on. I've kept it on automatic. You can also change the speed. There's a tally lamp on here so you can make sure that the camera's recording. You can turn that on or off, which I think is really handy because sometimes in dark situations you don't always want it on because it flashes and you don't want that. Now this camera takes two different types of memory cards. We've got SD card, but also CF Express Type B. Manfrotto were kind enough to send me this CF Express Type B card and the card reader. So thank you so much for that, but I highly recommend picking them up. I'll leave a link in the description for those. But then we want to make sure we set this up properly. So first thing we do is initialize the card. So you go over to the third menu there and it's the first tab, initialize media. Now that's the same as formatting the card. So you just click that and then you click whichever one you want to format and then it will format the card for you so you can start filming. Then we can assign how the camera uses these cards. So within this menu, you go over to the third tab and it says second card record functions and then you can choose how the camera operates. So you can use these two different card slots in different ways. You can have double card recording so it's kind of like a safety recording so you can record into the main card but then it records a backup to the second card. That's great for things like weddings and it's entirely up to you how you do it but I like the relay record feature. So I do a lot of vlogs and stuff for YouTube. It's just good to, if I'm doing a long thing like this, once one card's filled up it will automatically switch over to two. So it's up to you how you do that. You can also set it up to record the main media on the first card and then proxy on the second card which is really handy then you don't have to spend time in post making proxies. Right moving on to the video settings now this is how I set up this camera for video. First thing I want to do is set it up for full frame because it's got a few different modes for this and different sensor options. So it's the third menu across which is the recording slash media setup and then on the first tab it says sensor mode. You've got the options between full frame, super 35 
and Super 16. I'm gonna stick to full frame, but if you want those other options, you've got them. Then what we wanna do is make sure that this camera is set up in manual mode because we want full control over the exposure. We don't want any auto features. And we don't want to be cheating. So first menu on the camera setup and first tab iris mode, make sure it's set to manual. And then we want to set the recording format. So if you go over to recording media setup, the third menu, and then we go down to main recording format here. We want to choose XF AVC 422 10-bit. Then you've obviously got the option to output RAW over HDMI. So if you're going into a Ninja 5 or a Ninja 5 Plus, you can use that. And then you've got RAW Light and RAW Standard, but I'm keeping it in the XF AVC 10-bit. And then just one down from that, main resolution and bit rate. We've got a few different options. So we want to make sure that we're in one of the 4K options for the best quality. So we've got standard 16 by 9, or we've got the 17 by 9, which will give you that sort of black bars, a little bit more resolution on the sides. You can choose long GOP or intra frame. I'm going to go for long GOP on that one and then frame rate 25. That's my standard normal recording, not slow motion. So what you can do if we just go into the normal shooting mode there, you, rather than going into the menu to change all that stuff, now that we've set it up for the first time, if you tap on the icon in the bottom left of the screen and then go over to the menu, you've got these options that we've just done there. You've got full frame, you can click on that and quickly switch to the Super 35 or 16 mil. You can also change your card functions, the main destination of your card recording, where the camera's recording the media to. Normal recording, we'll come on to that in a minute. Then you can change the recording format there like we've just done, but this is just a quicker way of changing those things. We've got here recording mode, normal recording that's what it's set to at the moment the ones i'll advise sticking to is normal recording or slow and fast motion so we can switch quickly between normal speed and slow motion here slow and fast frame rate you can change that and go all the way up to 120 frames per second so that's an easy way of switching to slow motion and then you can quickly go back to normal recording just like that and then you're in 25 frames a second then we want to set the shutter speed or how the shutter is actually displayed so you can have it either at a shutter angle or shutter speed i like to work in both ways sometimes it's quick to use the shutter angle because then if you're switching between normal speed and slow motion you don't have to worry about resetting your shutter speed again but if i'm doing vlog stuff where i need to change it quickly then i'll just have it set to shutter speed and i can do that so nice and simple you go to the main menu and then it's the first tab main menu camera setup and then shutter mode and then you can change it from speed to angle so that's how you do it there. If you go to angle, when you switch to slow motion, it will automatically adjust the shutter speed for you. So it's one less thing to worry about. Then we've got digital image stabilization. That's on the seventh tab. And then we can turn that on there. And then you've got a couple of different modes. You've got standard or high. So I'm gonna, I've kept it in standard. That seems to be the most natural. So the next thing we need to do is set the picture profile. This is gonna help you get the most out of your color and your dynamic range. Now I recommend sticking to C-Log3. Nice and easy to set up this. Go into your menu, it's the second one across, and then you just click that and it gives you all of these different options here. So you select that and that's C-Log3 there. You can also access this menu on the touch screen and change it here. It gives you all your different options there as well. So that's a nice quick way of accessing that menu. Next thing, whether you're a manual focus person or an autofocus person, it's good to set up the autofocus. So you just go into the menu again, camera setup, fourth tab along, and then autofocus enable. You can set this up in a couple of different ways. So you've got a small area. So as you can see, there's a, just a tiny little box there that we've got for focusing. You can make that bigger, just press large. And then as you can see, there's a larger area there that we'll focus on. But I like the smaller area. I think it seems to work quite well. You can be a little bit more precise when you want to focus on something. Then what's really handy is you can set how the autofocus works. Because sometimes autofocus isn't always the most natural. It doesn't look like someone's doing it manually. And that's what you want to try and emulate. You don't want a super quick, fast focus because you get all the focus breathing. And it just looks a bit odd and distracting. So you can go in and change it. Now I recommend playing around with this yourself, um, but it's the response and the speed. So far I've got this set up at minus three with the speed. I'd probably go to two actually. I'd like it a little bit quicker. That's how quick the camera will focus on the point or how quickly the focus will be pulled. But then the responsiveness is how quick it would take 
to actually lock on to the new target. And it's going to be different for different things. And you'll, I guess, have a play around and see what you like best. And then the next tab along is the face detect and tracking. So you want to turn that on if you want it to detect faces. You can obviously turn it off if, you're not, if you don't need to. In that menu is your eye detection as well. If you really want it to pinpoint on people, then I recommend turning the eye detection on and it makes sure that the eye is the main focus. So if you're doing interviews and things like that, definitely worth turn on eye detection. Then we've got the assistance functions and exposure features. So we've got a focus guide. I like to have that on because the focus guide works really well. It's one of the best that I've seen actually, and I really like how the way it works. So focus guide, it's on the assistance functions and you can just turn that on and off nice and easily there. Then we've got focus peaking. And this is really good the way this works because it's fully customizable. You can change the colors, but then you can also change how bright that is and how much it shows as well, just by using the gain and the frequency. That's that's really handy because sometimes you can't always see the lines so you've got full customization over how you want to view that then we've got false color which is really handy to have within a camera usually you don't normally have that in a camera it's usually on external monitors but I love it how it's got that built in so if your monitor doesn't have that you can actually output that to the monitor but keep your camera screen clear. Now usually monitors will have that but it's nice that it's got that option if you want to keep it consistent with how the camera actually works because sometimes monitors, monitors can be slightly differently calibrated. You can also set up your zebras here so you can have one to make sure you're not clipping your highlights and then another zebra to expose for middle grey for example and then you know you're going to get perfect exposure and you can turn those zebras on and off in different places i.e. your LCD screen, your viewfinder, output it to HDMI however you want and then you can get the camera to show Zebra 1, Zebra 2 or both of them at the same time. And then we've got waveform. I really like this because you can change the different types of waveforms. You can have waveform or vector scope and you can actually go in and change the settings of how that looks and where it's positioned on your monitor. So if you've got something in your frame on the right but the vector scope is blocking it and you can't see, you can actually put your vector scope over on the left hand side so you can see the subject on the right. Love it, just little things like that make this camera really good. And then with the waveform, you can go in and change the settings of the waveform as well. Again, the positioning, the different types, you've got RGB, line, line and spot, all sorts, fully customizable. And then what I really like about this camera is you can choose what to display where. For example, if you're using an external monitor, or if you're using a combination of your viewfinder and your LCD screen, and I want a waveform on, I can actually output a waveform to my external monitor if I want to. And that frees up space and makes sure I can keep the LCD screen clear so I can focus on that. Or I could have the monitoring features on the LCD screen and then use my external monitor to make sure my composition and my framing's right. And then just have the exposure features on the camera. And you do that easily within each of the menus. For example, if I'm on the waveform, menu I can choose I can go over here and turn it off on the LCD screen and then on on the HDMI or over HDMI and that's the same with any of these for example my false color I can turn it on on the HDMI or on the LCD screen if I want to and that displays it there as you can see then if you've got an anamorphic lens on this camera you can actually de-squeeze it so you don't have to look at a stretched image in the camera so it's, it's the monitoring setup menu and then it's the third tab along and then you can again choose how to have this displayed either on the LCD screen, the viewfinder or output to HDMI. Now if you're shooting a log profile, for example C-Log3, it can look very flat on your monitor and it's a little bit uninspiring even though this has got a great LCD screen, one of the best I've ever seen to be honest. But you can add a LUT on top to make it look a little bit more colourful and so you can see the contrast. And you do that by going over to monitoring setup and turning on view assist on the LCD. Again you can output this to an external monitor but it's the seventh tab, view View Assist LCD and you just switch that on and the colours are really good. Now there's a load of buttons that you can customise on this camera so you can set it up to use it in the way you want to and everybody's got their own different preferences on how to set that up so I'm not going to tell you what functions to assign to which button but I'll tell you how to do it. For example you can assign a button to turn on or off your zebras or your focus peaking and it just makes it nice and quick so you don't have to go into the menu and turn them on all the time. That just takes time. To do this you go into the assignable buttons menu which is the one next to the spanner and then or it shows you 
each of the buttons where they are and then you just click on whichever one you want to change and then it brings up the full menu here of what you can change it to so you just scroll through and add the one that you want to change that to so button one for example we can change we can turn on zebras let's do something a bit more exciting shall we if I want to use false color I can quickly set that now to button number one so just press number one and false color is on how cool is that love it I love how you can set this camera up I think it's great uh, if you want to change the white balance nice and easily let's have a look white balance there we go click number one and then you can just change your white balance nice and quickly like that. White balance is really important. Let's The best way of doing it, I would say, is tap the touch screen there and then click on the white balance. Then you can change. Then that's where you can set your, your white balance. So you can tap on it and then scroll through and change your white balance here. Press set, um, set again, and then it's done. But you can also choose from presets. So we've got tungsten, daylight, and then you can have two different settings here. So you can actually point the camera at a white card and then set the white balance like that. Or you've also got auto white balance. I recommend staying away from auto because it changes too much and it's gonna mess with your color grading. So try and select the white balance where possible or choose the Kelvin. You can actually change the dials, how they work and the functions of them, as well as the RF lens ring. So that's nice and easy to do. Let's go into menu again and it's on the settings and it's the fourth tab across. It's the grip control dial or the control ring and the top control dial. You can choose what each of those dials do. Everyone likes to have that set up a different way. I like to keep it as it is just because that's what I've been used to. Don't forget you can always refer back to this guide whenever you're feeling stuck with this camera. Hopefully I've given you enough there to get started. Just a bit of a quick run through really. But if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.